very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and welcome to Pointless, the quiz show where the lowest scorers are the biggest winners. Let's meet today's players. Now, Heidi and Ray, welcome back. You were on the show last time. We gave everyone two chances to reach our pointless final, and today is your second and final chance. Remind us how you two know each other. Yeah, well, we are, we are blissfully married, although our, our marriage has had, has had a difficult, difficult time since the last show. It's been very stressful. We got a good pep talk from our three-year-old daughter, Scarlett, this morning, so we're, we're maybe back on the ball again. On to our next pair. Spencer and Peter, welcome back. You are friends and neighbours. And how did you get on yesterday? We didn't do terribly well. We went off at the first attempt. You did? But we what were a little, did bit for you? little bit unlucky. A little and, bit unlucky. And had loads of fun. And hopefully today it'll be a lot better. I hope so too. Welcome back. Lovely to have you here. And Mark and Daniel, welcome back. You were on the show last time. Uh, remind us how you two know each other. Well, me and Dan are work colleagues, but also good friends. Um, met through football. I'm a bit of a better player than Dan, so... <laughs> oh, he's looking away. That's nice. He's looking away he's as if to say, away. yes, that's true. And not say, <laughs> no that chance. is no such chance. a lie. No chance. <laughs> no, chance. No, chance. no chance. Finally, we've got Eloise and Nicola. Welcome to the show. How do you two know each other? Uh, we work together, um, which is at the Town and Weir Fire and Rescue Service. Fire and Rescue. Are you, are you, are you firefighters? I'm not. She is. I am, yeah. Wow. Good stuff. Well, best of luck this afternoon to you and welcome to the show. We'll find out more about all of you throughout the show. But meanwhile, I must introduce my friend with all the facts and figures, the man who knows everything, Richard. <laughs> Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon indeed. Uh, a, a great show. We've got three returning pairs today, which, uh, which doesn't happen very often. Also three rather good returning pairs mm. as well. I think it's going to be very tight. Uh, as always, I try and predict who I think is going to win. I've got one right in 21 shows so far. <laughs> I said to Mark and Daniel just before, I think you might win it. But Mark, you can tell Mark is a good football coach because he gave me a little motivational talk. What did he say? He said, he said, believe in yourself, your luck will change, tip us. So that's who I'm going for. I'm going for Mark and Daniel Ooh. to win. OK, we've asked all our questions on Pointless to 100 people before the show. To stay in the game, all our players need to do is score as few points as they can, and they do that by seeking out those little-known answers that as few of our 100 people gave as possible. Now, the thing everyone's trying to do, of course, is to find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people gave. And every time that happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. Now, the jackpot hasn't been won for the last two shows, so we will add another £1,000 to that. So today's jackpot starts off, would you believe it, at £4,000. <laughs> Nice, tidy sum. OK, let's play Pointless. <laughs> now, in the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated. And you have to be very careful, because if anyone gives me an incorrect answer, then this will happen. And that would be the worst thing of all, because you would score the maximum of 100 points. OK, guys, the first category this afternoon is... Movies. Everyone seems quite happy with that. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first and who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Robin Williams films as they could. Richard, Robin Williams films. Yeah, we're looking for any feature film made for cinema release for which uh, Robin Williams is credited as an actor. As always, I say we're not looking for short films, TV films, documentaries, anything where he plays himself. However, voice performances do count. How many movies, how many films do you think Robin Williams has made? Bags of them. It's 54. Yeah, yeah many of them very, very similar, but he has made 54 films. Wow. A lot of them where he plays sort of happy, sad. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? Does where he sort of smiles and frowns and looks sad at the same yeah, time. That's, that, yeah, that's, that's yeah. very much his canon. Yeah. So you've got 54 to choose from, guys. Mm-hmm. OK, thanks, Richard. Right, Heidi and Ray, you all drew lots before the show, and today you get to go first. Ray, a nice, obscure Robin Williams film. That's all we want. We're looking for Robin Williams films. Yeah, well, I'm going to go for The Fisher King. The Fisher King. You're hoping to score as few points as possible with that, of course. Let's see how many people said The Fisher King. <laughs> yeah, nice one, Ray. 
That scored you one. Fisher King, Richard. Yes, very, very good answer. Uh, it's uh, from 1991, and he received a, a Best Actor Oscar nomination for it. Very, Terry Gilliam, I think, was it? Uh, that's absolutely right, yeah. yeah. He directed it. Brilliant. Uh, um, OK, Peter. Big problem with Robin Williams. Sorry, big blur. Big problem. You, what's your problem with him? In, we can, in we can finding an answer, Alex. We can iron this out. Oh, I see. Right. So okay. I'm going to take a stab in the dark at a okay. science fiction thing and say, okay. alien. That is, like you say, a stab in the dark. OK, we're going to say alien. Alien, that's what you're saying. You're hoping to score as little as possible with this. If it is incorrect, of course, it will score 100 points. Let's see how many people said alien and if it is a correct answer. Bad luck, Peter. That's an incorrect answer, and that scores you the maximum of 100 points. OK, Mark. Robin Williams films. I think you probably know your Robin Williams films. I know a couple, I think. Um, I'm pretty sure you played Peter Pan in Hook. You want to score as little as possible with this. Let's see how many people said Hook. <laughs> Not a bad answer, Mark. Hook scores you eight. Hook, Richard. Yeah, Mark's exactly right. Uh, Robin Williams plays a, a grown-up Peter Pan. I knew you'd do it. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> believe, yeah? You've got to believe. You've got to believe. Well done, Mark. Uh, Eloise. Um, I'm going to go for Jumanji. Jumanji. What a good answer. Let's see how many people said Jumanji. I think it could be good. Not a bad answer. Jumanji scores you 20. Richard? Uh, yes, from uh, 1996, about a magical board game that comes to life. Wow. Again, one of his many happy, sad performances. Very happy, sad. Where everybody learns a valuable lesson. Tears yeah. yeah. OK, we are halfway through the round. Let's take a look at the scores as they stand. We have Heidi and Ray with one. Spencer and Peter. Alien. Oh, dear. Yeah, you're going to have to try and score as low as you can on the next pass and hope that that's going to keep you in the game. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? <laughs> OK, we are looking for Robin Williams films. Nicola. We'll go for Mrs Doubtfire. OK. Here's your red line. <gasps> it's nice and high. <laughs> you just have to hope Mrs Doubtfire gets you below that red line. Below that red line, you are definitely through to the next round. Let's see how many people said Mrs Doubtfire. Good enough. Yeah. It's good enough. Mrs. Dapfire scores you 55, taking your total to 75, Richard. Uh, yeah, Robin Williams plays uh, Euphigenia Doubtfire. He dresses up as uh, a nanny to spend more time with, uh, with his children. Won an Oscar for best makeup. Really? Yeah, which is like, it's like a consolation Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> OK, thank you very much. Daniel. Daniel, high scores. Still Spencer and Peter on 100. You are way down on eight. Are you a film fan? Uh, yes, I am. I That's think. good. And enough of a film fan to have quite a few Robin Definitely. Williams up your sleeve. If it's not a pointless answer, I'll be disappointed. Oh, that's good. I like oh, that. Fighting that's, talk. That that's brilliant. Talk. This is brilliant. Well done, Daniel. I'm going to go for insomnia. Insomnia. There's your red line. You don't have to come down that far to be through to the next round. I think you're going to do that. Wouldn't it be brilliant if this was pointless? Let's see if it is. Let's see how many people said insomnia. <laughs> oh, are you going to be disappointed? <laughs> no, you're not! Look at that. <laughs> well done, Daniel. That's pointless. And it adds £250 to today's jackpot. That takes the total up to £4,250. <laughs> But better than that, it scores you nothing and leaves your total at eight. Richard Insomnia. Uh, yeah, Insomnia from 2002. Uh, Al Pacino plays a detective with Insomnia. Robin Williams is in it as well. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I won't tell you who did it. It's Robin Williams. <laughs> uh, but it's, a, it's, a, it's a very, very good film. Excellent. Thanks, Richard. Well done, Daniel. That's a fantastic answer. Spencer. Sir. Spencer. We are looking for Robin Williams films. I've got two. Two of them have already gone, but I've got two. One of them was not one of his best films, but it was shown recently on the television, and I'm just wondering, am I going to go for that or go for the obvious one that's left? 
you're you are going to have to go obscure here. You are you are the front. I'm going to try. Obviously, flubber, flubber. Okay. There is only one way that you will remain in this game after this round, and that is you have to score nothing with flubber. And Heidi has to give me the name of a film that doesn't exist or isn't a Robin Williams film. If those two things come in, you are through to the next round. OK, let's see how many people said flubber. You really want this to be a pointless answer, ideally. Flubber. Well, it's correct. Oh! <laughs> it's not a bad answer. But I'm afraid it scores you 16, taking your total up to 116. Richard Flubber. Uh, yeah, Robin Williams plays Professor Brainerd, who invents a sort of green rubbery substance called Flubber, and it's two hours of my life I'm never going to get back. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, Richard. Well, the writing is on the wall, I'm afraid, for Spencer and Peter. They are now so far ahead, 116 they are, that even if Heidi and Ray make something up and it's completely wrong, they won't overtake that high score. So, Heidi... Look on this as a, as a free swim. Mm. I used to be an usherette, actually. Did you really? Yeah. So you've, you've seen lots of films? Yeah. So a bit of a sore back, or are you allowed to sit down? Do you have a little jump seat for an usherette? Jump seat. <laughs> jump seat, very yeah. good. OK, so well, I'm going to go for Awakenings. Awakenings? Yeah, because I can't lose, sure we can't. You can't lose. I'm going for Awakenings, then. Awakenings? Yeah. OK, let's see how many people said Awakenings, and if it is a correct answer. Oh, I think it's going a long way down, Heidi. I think the jackpot's going to get bigger. Yes! <laughs> That's a fabulous answer, Heidi, and it's pointless, and it adds another 250 quid to today's jackpot, taking the total to £4,500. <laughs> Richard, awake me. Yeah, very good answer from 1990 with Robert De Niro. Uh, if you're faced with the choice of flubber and awakenings, I, I would go awakenings. <laughs> So that's the end of round one, and the losing pair with the highest score, I'm sorry to say, it's Spencer and Peter. Spencer, a film buff. A film buff, by your own admission. What were you thinking when Peter said alien? I wanted to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Did a little bit of want to just open up and a face come out and just <laughs> eat him whole. Yeah, never mind. Uh, Richard, what answer should they have given that would have kept them in the game? There were a whole host of pointless Robin Williams films, who'd have thought? Let's take a look at a few of them. Awakenings, we've had insomnia, we've had Dead Again with uh, Kenneth Branagh, you know, the sort of yeah, black yeah. and white and colour one with Kenneth yeah. Branagh and Emma In Thompson. American. Yep, absolutely. Let's take a look at a few more. Deconstructing Harry, where he keeps going in and out of focus. Cadillac Man, uh, Robin Williams and Tim Robbins, well done if you got that. Hamlet, can you believe Night at the Museum 2 was a pointless answer, it's a brilliant film. Father's wow. Day, Seize the Day, that was pointless. Uh, Nine Months, the, the Hugh Grant comedy, he's in that. Man of the Year, Moscow on the Hudson, are there more? There are. Fern Gully, The Last Rainforest, Death to Smoochie, <laughs> and House of D. Those are all pointless answers. Well done if you got uh, any of those. Uh, the worst answers you could have had, uh, all of these are, are pretty much familiar. Uh, Eloise gave us the third worst answer, which was uh, Jumanji. Uh, Good Morning Vietnam was the second worst answer. The top answer of all was Mrs Doubtfire, which goes to show you can get two big answers, but so long as somebody along the line is saying alien, you'll go through to the next <laughs> round. <laughs> <laughs> OK, thanks, Richard. Spencer and Peter, I'm afraid you just didn't have that pointless Robin Williams knowledge you needed to get through to the next round, so we have to say goodbye. But you've been fantastic contestants. Thanks so much for playing Pointless. Thank you very much. <clears throat> However, for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Now, obviously, only two pairs will make it through to the head-to-head, -head, so one of our teams is going to be leaving at the end of this round very disappointed. You just have to make sure it's not you. The category for the second round is... Cuisine. Oh, I like that. Cuisine. Can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. <laughs> we gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many cuts of beef as they could. Cuts of beef, Richard. Yeah, the, uh, the correct answers we're about to show you are all traditional British cuts of beef. Uh, the incorrect ones, of course, are not. 
Fair enough. Okay, in round two, we're going to give you a choice of seven possible answers in each pass. And I can tell you that at least one of those answers is pointless. You have to be very careful because at least one of those answers is incorrect. Pick one of those and you will score the maximum of 100 points. Okay, here's your first set of seven answers. Blade, flank, leg, shin, fetlock, sirloin, skillet. Okay, Ray, take a look at the list there and see if you can find a nice... A nice answer that's not going to score you too much. Right. I'm going to say shin. I think shin's a cut of meat. OK, you're saying shin. You have to hope this is a correct answer, and you have to hope as few of our 100 people said it as possible. Let's see how many people said shin. It's good. It could be very good. Still going down, right? 25. Shin scores you 25. Richard. Uh, yeah, you can, uh, you can eat a shin of beef, also known as a shank of beef. All right, very good. Remember, Mark, there is at least one pointless answer in there and also at least one incorrect answer. Are you feeling confident? Not too great on food. I enjoy my food, but I'm not really fussed on what it's called. I'm just put it on the <laughs> plate and, uh, and I'll eat it. And eat it. So beef's not my... I'm not too sure, but I'm going to go for skillet at the bottom there. Skillet. Let's see first if it's correct, and if it is, let's see how many people said it's skillet. Bad luck, Mark. Unfortunately, skillet is incorrect. That scores you a maximum of 100 points. Richard, skillet. Uh, yeah, it's a type of pan, a skillet, I'm afraid, rather than a, than a cut of beef. Tough I've luck. let you down. I've let you down. You know what? Never give up. Never give up. <laughs> OK. <laughs> still got Daniel. Believe. Still I can see it in your eyes. You still believe. Nicola. Remember, we are looking for cuts of beef. I think I'd like to go for blade, please, if you don't mind. You're going to go for blade? I don't mind. Yes. <laughs> it's there. You might as well. Take it. Go on, it. I'll go, go for on. blade. Nicola, yeah. fill your boots. Blade, OK. If it's correct, I reckon it's going all the way down. Let's see if it is correct. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Blade. It's good. Well played, Nicola. That's pointless, so it adds another £250 to today's jackpot, taking the total up to £4,750. <laughs> and best of all, it scores you nothing, does Blade. Richard? Yeah, Blade of Beef, uh, that's, uh, that's very well done. As opposed to Medium Rare, uh, <laughs> scores you no points at all. Let's take a look at the rest of them. Uh, sirloin, as you say, that's an obvious one. That would have scored you 67 points. Uh, flank. Uh, you can also have that. That would have scored you just six points. Would have been a very good answer. Uh, out of those two, Zander, which do you think the which do you think is the wrong answer there? Yeah, I'm saying Fetlock's the wrong one. You are absolutely right. Fetlock was the wrong answer. Leg uh, would have scored you eleven points. <laughs> okay, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores. We have Nicola and Eloise looking fabulous there on nothing. A brilliant answer from Nicola there with Blade. Mark and Daniel, bad luck. You went out in a limb. Sadly, it wasn't a leg. <laughs> and there you are in 100. So the pressure is on Daniel to find a really good low-scoring, preferably pointless answer. And you've just got to hope that's going to keep you in the game in the next pass. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? <laughs> OK, we're going to put seven more answers on the board. We are looking for cuts of beef. And here are your options. Top side, silver side, clod, rump, neck, steer, chuck. Right. Eloise. Looking at that, I think I'm going to go for Chuck. You're going for Chuck? Yes. OK, the high scorers are Daniel and Mark on 100. There's the red line. You only have to come below that. But I like that. You're not playing it safe. Let's see how many people said Chuck. <laughs> it's good. Chuck scores you two, which takes your total up to two. Richard? Yeah, the chuck is from the, the shoulder area. It's quite tough and fatty, but actually very tasty and very cheap. A chuck of beef. Very tasty and very cheap. <laughs> now, remember, there is at least one pointless answer in there, and there is also at least one incorrect answer. Daniel, she's taken the one out that was the nearly pointless. She's made your job easier. You have to find a pointless answer. Whatever happens, I'm not going to hold it against Mark. 
It's that fellow over there that I'm going to hold it against because he predicted it. He I'm I'm a, it just on a point of order, it's actually Mark's fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, what can I say? I mean, I, I've just got to pray they, they get something wrong. I think I'm just going to go for steer. You're going to go for steer. I like the sound of steer. OK, let's hope it's a correct dancer. If it is, I reckon it'll be a low scorer. But it has to be correct first. Let's see how many of our 100 people said steer. Blow. Ah. Well, down in flames, but an impressive exit, I would say. Uh, Daniel, I'm afraid Steer scores you 100 points because it is an incorrect answer, and that takes your total up to 200. Richard? You know what? I, I genuinely give up. <laughs> <laughs> well, genuinely, they're two very smart young men, clever, they seem to have your varied sort of knowledge, and 200 points. Uh, mysterious. It's a young ox which is raised for its beef. It's not, it's not a cut of beef. It is very much beef itself. A steer. <sighs> Bad luck. A shame, but a commendable mistake. You made it for the right reasons. I guess so. Heidi. Yes. Well, the good news is, whatever happens, you are in the head-to-head -head round. That's the good news. The other good news is, there is at least one pointless answer on the board. Oh. Claude? See, I would have said Claude would have been pointless, but then... Well, it might be still. You can do anything. It doesn't matter. You can be as wrong as you like. Yeah, but I'm trying to get a few extra money in the kitty. But that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Try and be pointless. Yeah, all right. Because yeah. it doesn't matter. So don't Claude go... it is. Claude it is. I yeah. think that's probably the right approach to this. Let's see if it's a correct answer. Let's see if it's a pointless answer. Let's see how many people said Claude. Oh, it's Ooh. good. Straight to the club counter with you after this. That's a pointless <laughs> yeah. answer. It adds another £250 to today's jackpot, taking the total up to an unbelievable £5,000. <laughs> it scores you nothing and it leaves your total at 25. Richard? Yes, very, very well done, Heidi. Clod, it's another cheap cut from there, from the shoulder. Let's take a look at the others. All the other answers would have been uh, acceptable. There's no pointlesses left. Uh, rump, uh, obviously, would have been the uh, highest scorer. That would have got you 62. Then top side would have scored you 27. Silver side would have got you 23. And uh, neck would have got you five points. Thanks, Richard. So at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score. I'm sorry, it's Mark and Daniel. Bad luck. Who of the pair of you, who do you reckon has performed the best over the last two shows? Oh, no, well, this <laughs> speaks volumes, isn't it? If you get a pointless. Uh, <laughs> it's, like, it's like scoring a hat-trick, isn't it's it? Like, it's like a fifer, isn't it? Exactly. You got the pointless. Um, but what I have to say, you've been fantastic, Contessa. It's been great fun having you on the show. Thank you very much for playing. Thanks. <laughs> well, for the remaining two players, things are about to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. So well done, Heidi and Ray, Eloise and Nicola. You've made it through to the head to head. Now, obviously, only one pair can make it through to today's final and play for the jackpot, which, in case you'd forgotten, currently stands at £5,000. <laughs> Massive. OK, you're going head to head on up to five questions. For each question, each pair needs to give me just one answer, and you are now allowed to confer. That's the good news. All you have to do is come up with an answer that scores less than the other pair to win that question. And the first pair to win three will be playing for today's jackpot. Hope that's clear. OK, let's play Pointless. <laughs> right, here's your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many netball positions as they could. Richard, netball positions. Yeah, it was simply looking for any of the seven playing positions uh, in a game of netball. And while they're conferring, see if you get all seven at home. OK, Heidi and Ray, because you've played the best throughout the show so far, you get to go first. OK, I'm going to say wing attack. Brilliant. OK, Eloise and Nicola. Go for wing defence, please. Wing defence, you're going to say. Wing defence. Heidi and Ray answered first. Wing attack. Let's see how many people said wing attack. <laughs> 22. <laughs> wing attack scores 22. <laughs> Eloise and Nicola are hoping they're going to score even lower with wing defence. Let's see if they do. Let's see how many people said wing defence. 
Down it goes. Yes, it's got it! <laughs> Wing defence wins. Well done. After the first question, it is 1-0 to Eloise and Nicola. Richard? Yeah, a very good intervention there from Nicola. It's the best answer you possibly could have given. Uh, let's take a look at all seven, though. Uh, wing defence, there it is. Goalkeeper would have been 18, then uh, wing attack we've had. Then goal shooter, centre, very much the engine room of any netball team. Uh, goal defence and goal attack was the, the most popular answer of all. Well done if you got all seven. OK, here is your second question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many UK Eurovision winners as they could. Richard. Yep, simply any act that has represented the UK in the Eurovision Song Contest and won. There are five of those acts. I suspect uh, we may never see their like again. <laughs> OK, this time it's Eloise and Nicola to go first. We'll have a go at Katrina and the Waves. Katrina and the Waves, yes, you're going to say. Heidi and Ray. And Sandy Shaw, the old one. Mm -hmm. You sure? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Right, we'll go for Sandy Shaw. Sandy Shaw. Yeah. So from Eloise and Nicola, we have Katrina and the Waves. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Katrina and the Waves. That's a low score, 13 for Katrina and the Waves. Heidi and Ray have said Sandy Shaw. Let's see how many people said Sandy Shaw. Wow. <laughs> Surprising. Uh, that scores you 42. I'm afraid Katrina and the Waves wins it for Eloise and Nicola. So after the second question, it is 2-0 to Eloise and Nicola. Richard. Uh, yeah, I'm amazed. Sandy Shaw was actually the most popular answer of all. How uh, weird. I know. Uh, and once again, Nick and Eloise have picked the best possible answer. That's two questions in a row. That's 100% perfect so far. Let's take a look at all five of them. Uh, Katrina and the Ways with Love Shine a Light, 13. Brotherhood of Man, Save All Your Kisses for Me, was 19. Lulu, who was a was joint winner with Boom Bang A Bang. Uh, Bucksfield's Making Your Mind Up. And then uh, right at the top, there's Sandy Shaw with Puppet on a String from uh, 1967. Thanks very much, Richard. Right, pressure's on, Heidi and Ray. You've got to win this one, otherwise Eloise and Nicola are straight through to the final. Or, alternately, Eloise and Nicola, you've got to win this one to get through <laughs> to the final. OK, good luck. Here is your third question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many countries beginning with you as they could. Countries beginning with you. Heidi's looking quite hopeful. Richard. Yeah, there are seven countries in the world that begin with the letter U. We're looking for the most obscure one. Uh, so again, see if you can get all seven of those at home. Uh, as always, by country, we mean a sovereign state that is a, a member of the UN. All right, Heidi and Ray, this time it is your turn to go first. Good luck. You've got to score a really low answer with this. I have every confidence in Ray. June. He reads maps for fun. <laughs> for fun? For fun. I'm going to say Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan. Mm. That's a good one. Oh, that's a very good one. Uzbekistan. Eloise and Nicola, once again, you've done all your conferring. Yes. You're sitting there looking <laughs> serene and confident, happy that you've got I a don't think we're as confident. Blinded, no, we're not as confident on this one. No. no. OK, what's it going to be? We're going to go for Uganda. <laughs> OK, you're going for Uganda. OK, Heidi and Ray. You've got to win this one to stay in the game. Very, very important. Eloise and Nicola have got two break points here. You are saying Uzbekistan. Let's see how many people said Uzbekistan. Oh, it's not a bad one. All right. All right. 28. You happy with that? Not really. Um, <laughs> Do you think that's going to be enough? Uganda's a good one. I've never mm. heard that one that you said. <laughs> Pretty yet, people have. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Eloise and Nicola have said Uganda. Let's see how many people said Uganda and if it's good enough to see them straight through to the final. Uganda. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> Surprisingly high score there. Uganda, 78. So, Heidi and Ray are clawing it back after the third question, which is 2-1. Richard? Uh, yeah, Uganda's actually the, the most popular answer of all. Uh, Uzbekistan's a very, very good answer. There was actually one country that could have beaten it. Let's take a look at what that was. 
United Arab Emirates would have scored 14 points. Well done if you got that at home. Uh, Uzbekistan, United Kingdom with 33. Uh, Ukraine with 34. The United States of America are only getting 35. Uh, they won't be happy with that. Uh, then Uruguay with 67. And yet, so Uganda scoring more than double the United States of America. Extraordinary. OK, our fourth question is coming up. Once again, Eloise and Nicola, you only have to get this one right to be through to the final. Heidi and Ray, see if you can claw back here. Here is your fourth question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many members of the Osborne family as they could. Members of the Osborne family. Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any member of the Osborne family, by which we mean the rock star, his manager's wife, and their three children. OK. The Osborne family, Eloise and Nicola, get to go first, which could be a heavy strategic advantage in this one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go for Jack. You're going to go for Jack. Mm -hmm. Heidi and Ray, Jack has gone. Yes. I'm going to go for Amy. We are going to go for Amy. I think that's the one you ever see. You're going to go for one. Amy. Yeah. Oh. I think. OK. Eloise and Nicola said Jack. If you win this question, straight through to the final with you. Let's see how many people said Jack. <laughs> 60. It's quite high. Heidi and Ray have said Amy Osborne. Let's see how many people said that and if it is correct. It is correct. Yep. There we are. 17, look at that. OK, so we are game on. After the fourth question, it is absolutely even. Two all. Anything could happen. Richard. Yeah, what a comeback. Amy, it's the best answer you, uh, you possibly could have given. As you say, she, she refuses to appear on the TV show. Sharon calls her the normal one. Uh, there she is at the bottom with 17. Uh, Kelly Osborne, less well known than her brother Jack. She will not like that. And uh, right at the top there, we very, very rarely see scores that high, do we? Obviously very famous. Sharon with 97 and Ozzy with 98 points. OK. We are at a very interesting state of affairs. We have Heidi and Ray on two. We have Eloise and Nicola on two. You have had two break points, which mm -hmm. you've squandered. <laughs> Heidi and Ray have come from nowhere. And you are neck and neck with one question to go. Here is that fifth deciding question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Great Britons as they could. Richard. Yes, yeah, specifically, we're looking for anyone who made the top 10 of the BBC series Great Britons in 2002. Any of the top 10 Britons as voted for by the BBC audience. OK, Heidi and Ray, this time you get to go first. We are looking for Great Britons. OK, we're going to go for... Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Yeah. Eloise and Nicola, we are looking for Great Britons. Oh, um, I think we're going to plump for Winston Churchill. You're going to go for Winston Churchill. Yeah, I'm going to vote Noel. Mm -hmm. Heidi and Ray have said Isambard Kingdom Brunel. We have to hope this is a correct answer. Whoever wins this, obviously, is straight through to the final. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Isambard Kingdom Brunel. It is correct. <laughs> Down to go, 17. Only 17 people said Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Eloise and Nicola are going for Winston Churchill. Again, we have to hope that's correct. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Winston Churchill. Oh. Oh. 46. So, at the end of a nail-biting head-to-head, -head, Heidi and Ray go through with three points to two. 
Amazing fight back there, Richard. Yeah, brilliant. Very, very well done. Uh, you guys actually picked the, the two most popular answers there and the, uh, the two men who finished first and second on the poll. Winston Churchill was voted the greatest Briton of all time and Isambard Kingdom Brunel was the second greatest. Let's take a look at all ten, see how many you got. There's John Lennon, right, right down the bottom there. Uh, then Horatio Nelson, uh, Oliver Cromwell was in there, Isaac Newton was in there. Diana, Princess of Wales, was third on the list. Not only did she beat Newton, Cromwell, Nelson and Lennon, she beat Charles Darwin and William Shakespeare. How many she, plays have you got to write? She was, yeah, <laughs> hey, but she was the Queen of Hearts. Yeah, true enough. Uh, so Shakespeare was 13, uh, and we've already heard Isambard Kingdom Brunel was 17, which has seen you through to the final, and Winston Churchill with 46. Also, uh, Charles Darwin didn't have Paul Burrell as his wingman. That's true. <laughs> and looking further down the list, you came 14th, just behind Gareth Gates. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Richard. So the losing pair at the end of the head-to-head -head is Eloise and Nicola. Bad. Like You started oh. off so strong, you came out of the traps right up to 2-0 <laughs> in no time at all. It looked like you were going all the way. Oh, no. I know, never mind. Never mind. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah. Never mind. next time. Well, there's always next time, exactly. Everyone gets two cracks yeah. of this. But, um, well, you've been fantastic. You've come all the way to the head-to-head -head and so nearly made it to the final. You've been fantastic contestants. Thanks so much for playing. But for Heidi and Ray, it's now time for our exciting pointless final and the chance to win £5,000. <laughs> Congratulations, Heidi and Ray. You've seen off all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy. <laughs> I know that's what you've come for. Now, though, you've got a chance to win our pointless jackpot. At the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at an impressive £5,000. <laughs> <laughs> so the rules are very simple. To win the money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer that no one else could think of. We've had four pointless answers on the show today. Can you believe it? And you've given us two of those, Heidi. Let's hope you can find one more now between you. First, though, you've got to choose a category from these three options, and you can go for... Music Legends, Cricket or London? Well, my immediate instinct is Cricket because Ray loves Cricket. But cricket, there's a lot. I know. Oh, go for cricket, I don't know. Okay, we'll do cricket. Yes. You're going to do cricket? Ah, okay, not? you're sure. going to go for cricket. Right. Let's find out what the question is. £5,000 riding on this. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many England Test cricket captains as they could. Well, you're not crying. Richard. Yeah, we're looking for the name of anyone who's captained the England men's Test cricket team since 1970. There are 25 answers on the list. Very, very best of luck. Very best of luck. OK, you now have up to one minute to come up with three answers. And all you need to win that £5,000 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Your 60 seconds start now. I'm thinking as far back as I can go would be Douglas Jardine, the Bodyline series. I know there was one summer where England were dreadful and had about four captains. Colin Cowdery was one of them. I've heard of him, but that doesn't mean He's anything. Pretty, and my, the other ones I would know would be all pretty popular, like Mike Brearley and Mike David, Brearley, David, David Garr, Gooch, but they would all be quite big. What about going way back 70s? Is <laughs> Bob Willis one of them? Yeah, he was. Go for so Bob what about around that ballpark? Alan Lamb, I think maybe he was like a substitute captain one Is he time. Is South African? <laughs> Is he not? And Kevin Peterson as well. Five left. Well, that might be a good wee. Yeah, just for a Modern one. And Freddie Funtall. There's your time up. OK, we were looking for England test cricket captains. I now need your three answers. Colin Cowdery. What's that body line guy? Douglas Jardine. Douglas Jardine. Go for... I'm not, I'm not getting involved. I'm going to say Alan Lamb. Alan Lamb. Mm. OK, those are your three answers. Which of those do you reckon is your strongest chance, your, your best chance of getting a pointless? Possibly Alan Lamb. I so think Alan Lamb, let's put him third. Which is the one you probably have the least faith in? I'd say Jardine's probably quite well known, um, even though it's a long time ago. Okay, well, we'll put Jardine first. And that leaves us with Cowdery. Colin Cowdery yeah. second. OK, let's put them up. OK, on the board, Douglas Jardine, Colin Cowdery, and Alan Lamb. There they are, up on the board. OK, we were looking for England Test cricket captains. 
This was your least confident answer. Douglas Jardine. This is your first of three shots at £5,000. What are you What are you worrying about? I, I think he hasn't heard 1970s on. I didn't. Body line was old. Ah. <laughs> that's definitely wrong. Ah. So it's that's 1930s. It. Mind you, though, you did, let's look at the positive. You didn't have that much faith in this. This was no, the first one. Even if even if it was right, you would be pretty sure someone out of a hundred people would have got it. Anyway, Douglas Jardine. Let's see what happens. I think we probably know what's coming. Yes. Yes! It's unfortunately, that's not a pointless answer. I'm afraid you only have two more chances to win today's jackpot. £5,000, a lot of money. What would you spend £5,000 on? A good cricket book. <laughs> <laughs> a good holiday, of course. Yeah, we like to go on holiday. Oh, a nice holiday, mm. fantastic. Five grand, well spent. OK, we're looking for England Test cricket captains. Let's hope nobody said your next answer. This has to be pointless to win the jackpot. You've said Colin Cowdery. Now, let's hope nobody said Colin Cowdery. Oh, no! Dear, oh, dear, Colin Cowdery is an incorrect answer, so that is not a pointless answer either. OK, so... <laughs> let's pretend... Let's pretend that Douglas Jardine scored seven and uh, Colin Cowdery scored one. Oh, we've still got one shot <laughs> up our sleeves. I like that, yeah. OK, I mean, it might have happened. It's feasible. So don't be too disappointed. This is for five grand. It's for £5,000. There's that holiday. There's that Alan Lamb. <laughs> we have to hope that nobody said Alan Lamb. And if they didn't, then you walk away with five grand at the end of this. OK, let's see how many people said Alan Lamb. It's right. I reckoned if this was right, it was going all the way down. Down it goes. It's very exciting. It's a five thousand pound. Yes! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 I don't believe it needed to be. Oh, well, well done. <laughs> well, congratulations. You managed to find that all important pointless answer, which means you go home with the jackpot of £5,000. That's brilliant. <laughs> your, faith, your faith in Ray was fantastically yeah. well placed. Yeah. How many tests did he captain, I wonder? Well, pretty one. Uh, yeah, Ray, your thinking was exactly right. Adam Nam was, was a standing captain for three tests in 1990, <laughs> so you're five grand uh, better off. Uh, Colin Cowdery, uh, of course, was, was a captain uh, way back when. I think you were thinking of the summer when we had a lot of captains and Chris Cowdery, Chris his son, Chris yes. was, uh, was captain was for one well. test. Uh, and Douglas Jardine, obviously, was uh, <laughs> back in the day, a long off. time before the 70s. OK, thank you very much, Richard. Well, thanks once again to our winning players, Heidi and Ray, who go away with today's jackpot of £5,000. <laughs> very well done. Join us next time when we put more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>